Hello everyone! Welcome back to another episode of Hyrule Chronicles. This is episode 43. I am Articulate T, and with me today, as always, I have Renji Vox being played by the Netherlad. Good evening. I have Hikan Co being played by Alvarance. Hello. I have Zayden Shari being played by Robo Pirate. Hi there. And I have Max being played by Keystrith. Hello. So, what happened last time, friendos? So, uh, last time, Hikan found the uh, purpose of the universe, which apparently, since, you know, it was episode 42 and all that, is pain. Lots and lots of pain. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, whilst experiencing this pain, um, everyone else kind of responded very swiftly to the situation, and the Frankimuth was taken down relatively quickly thanks to Max's lightning specialty, since it has shock success. Shock success. Susceptibility. Susceptibility. That word. And <laughs> and uh, after defeating the, uh, well, actually, current, but within the middle of the battle with the Frog Hemoth, two of those sea wraiths showed up and poisoned Max and Zaiden, to which Hakon was like, screw this, these guys are going to keep teleporting, I'm going to go grab that thing on that altar there, because it looks important, and it was. And the fog went away. And after waking everyone up with all the lightning and Renji's thunderstep, uh, and defeating the Frog Hemoth and the Sea Wraiths, non-lethally, except for the Frog Hemoth, uh, it kind of was a mixed bag of things all last week with how we dealt with a lot of things. But uh, regardless, we all of the sentient beings were not killed, and we took them back up to inform the guards of what exactly happened. On our way back to the Zephyr's favor, Hikon stayed out for a little bit to see how the current leading suspect, uh, Lord Frewind, um, was taking the news of the fog, but he was too tired to really give Hikon any hints, or he was just that hard to read. Uh, Hikon went in, and Mara proceeded to nervously attempt to play nurse out of concern. And that's where we left off. Uh, so, uh, it was generally decided uh, at the end of all of this that you would essentially be getting a decent long rest in for this one. Um, did anybody need to do anything before they do that? Yes. Uh, Max is uh, very reluctantly going to let Hikan help him with his bandages. Okay. So, I, I, I presume then at that point that is where Max is cleaning up a bit? Yeah. Okay. So Hikan is being very respectful, doing his best not to, or <laughs> taking a look at Max. Because I don't know exactly how Max's scales look or work, because I haven't seen well, them. Before. I'm about to describe. Hey. <laughs> like, it, the, there's a good few seconds where he's just staring at the ground, but then he just grabs the shawl and just throws it off, and you can already see that. Like his shoulders and half of his upper arm are completely covered in dark blue scales. And also, there is a line on his forearm around about where the Garaya hit him a few days ago, or was it a week ago by now? With the boomerang, which has also covered over with even more blue scales. <laughs> and when he takes off his shirt as well, there's even more going. To cover the, his back from about the base of his neck, right the way down past the base of his spine. Well, that kind of changes how I was going to handle things, <laughs> because I don't think I can uh, avoid touching the uh, scales there. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why I'm just straight up describing it. <laughs> okay. So, um, Khan takes a moment. Because... Max is just staring at you and daring you to say something. 
how commonly known are dragons? Because, you know, lore-wise, I know there's Volvagia and the three dragons from Hyrule lore, but I don't know how much, like, a common person would know. Make a, either a, uh, a history or a religion check. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's the exact same. You won. Oh, uh, a non-natural one. A non-natural one. Uh... When it comes to dragons, um, it's difficult to say. You know of them in stories, but that's about it. You know that they are big, nasty things, uh, or usually described as big, nasty things, but not terribly, um, not terribly detailed as to what they are or what they're capable of, or what their significance is. It might be an aspect of your of your training and learning back from home that you may have not looked into too deeply. It didn't take. Because yeah. it was more of a, you know, like, do I know more that dragons are a thing, or do I think that Max is closer to part Sebastian? Um... <laughs> uh... <laughs> And I think Sebastian or Zoras are the only things that he's seen with scales that's been tactile or lizards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've never seen scales of... I don't think you've seen scales of this variety, because, like, Lizophos scales are fairly kind of... It's... I, su I assume because Max's scales are dragon scales, they kind of overlap like a set of scale mail, as opposed to lizard the one, scales. The ones on the ones on his back certainly do. Yeah, it's unlike the ones on his arms are a bit, yeah, so a bit flatter. Mm. So it's unlike, say, a little Voss scales, where it's kind of just smooth, uniform sort of like gecko a snake. Yeah, yeah, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> the uh, cons they, of playing they, a character with a minus two to intelligence. Do they, do they kind of look like the Drake dogs? A little bit. Yes. They were also that fair. is a fair... Okay, that that is a fair point. Okay. So um, the con will pull out parts of his healer's kit, the, the other bandages, to sit there and do that. And uh, he'll approach Max, and uh, he'll just... Uh, so, um, uh, I, I think most of it happened, like, to your torso there, so I'm gonna need you to lift your arms real quick and let me know if it's too tight, because I haven't bandaged, um, anything quite like that before, but I'll give it my mm. best shot. Mm. Raise the arms. And uh, Hikon wins this because it, it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Hikon will start wrapping around uh, um, the uh, wounds along Max's torso. Um, I haven't seen anything like this before. Uh, it's it's. Um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'll ask you the same question I asked Simeon a while ago. What do you know hmm. about what do you know about dragons? Uh something about stories. I it was probably talked about, but I didn't really pay much attention when we were talking about things like that and it was really hard for me to absorb it, you know? What I know about what happened to me is the person who did it was trying to either steal or copy or whatever the power of dragons. And and... Go ahead, sorry. Using me to try and figure out a way to do it, I guess. Okay. What no. I know, what I've read, says that they're 
monsters. That they're pretty much all evil. And just points at the line on his arm and says, This tells me that it's not done yet. Would Hikon be aware of how Lizalfos or Darknuts have historically been portrayed? Because um, they're also monsters. Uh, I'd say, I'd say roll history, but with advantage, and it will be a low okay. DC because they are actively present. In the world. Natural twenty for an eighteen. Natural twenty for an eighteen. Yay! Uh, as opposed to a natural one for a minus one. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, so uh, the thing about the Lizalfoss and the Darknuts is that history has not looked favorably on them for different reasons. Um, mm -hmm. Lizalfoss, most of them hail from either beyond the sea or they hail from um, the other side of the mountain range to the east. Um, where it is said there is a massive jungle uh, that kind of spreads for miles in every direction on the other side of that mountain range. Um, for the most part, those of us have been seen as uh, tribalistic. Um, uh, at best, they've been seen as having a culture that, is, that, while not necessarily entirely evil, is based around... Uh, challenge and um, oftentimes that comes with the a level of combat. Most Lizalfoss who make their way over to the west uh, hire themselves out as mercenaries either for the, the fact that it's the best skills they have to offer to get coin or it is um, just they're doing it just for the fun of a good fight and a good kill. Um, of course, this isn't universal, as you have seen with uh, Sebastian, um, but you kind of might understand now why it is that Sebastian has attempted to take on such a disguise, that he just wants to fit in, but he's a little foss, and it's it is like he doesn't he doesn't have his people doesn't don't doesn't have as good will with Hyrule as the Gorons or the Zora do. Um, Hell, even by most standards, he doesn't have as much goodwill as with the Hylians as the Gerudo do, which is to say something. Um, but uh, given the level of his disguise, you can imagine that this little, that Sebastian has kind of earned his place, even though he maintains the disguise, as it were. But you're not sure as to whether or not he he maintains it for the sake of he still believes he's undercover, or if he maintains it for the simple fact that. Um, he just, like, it's a persona that people have come to like, and he would do, he feels like he'd be disappointing people if he just let it go. Um, as for... Oh, go ahead. Because yeah, Sebastian was going to be the first example that would come to Hikan's mind um, yeah. with that. And Dark Nuts would be too, given that they did have a brief encounter with... Oh no, we said his name a lot as a joke and I don't remember it. Eisenfuror. Yes, Eisenfuror. I actually think I have it written down somewhere in my notes, but yes. Because um, Eisenfuror was just a legalist, and Hikon knows that it's like, well, that's just a different thing on how different people are treated, he supposes. But Yeah, with the Dark Nuts, it's a different story. They put, like, people don't look favorably upon the Dark Nuts, but that's because the Dark Nuts are less try they're far from tribalistic they're they are military dictatorship are us um they uh there's not many of them but they are touted as some of the best organized soldiers in all of hyrule by comparison of most and in many instances um they're also quite arrogant uh it's it's basically kind of chivalry, but less about being good to other people, and more about, like, yeah, obeying the law. They are lawful, to say the least. Um, and people don't like them because of their size and the fact that most, if not all of them, are soldiers, and they 
tend to use that to their advantage and seek glory and conquest and all that kind of stuff. Even though they haven't really gotten that far. Um, Eisenfura <laughs> was probably a prototypical Dark Nut. Um, and it certainly showed in his actions when you encountered him way back in Lon Lon Ranch. Okay, cool. So Khan sits there and gets his pondering face on, especially after monsters, and starts thinking about Sebastian and all the things that he knows about Lizalfos, and then it clicks. Like, he knew that he was pretending to be a Hylian before to, to, to fit in, but then it clicks, and he goes, oh, that's why, just after like 10 seconds of silence. <laughs> and then he goes, well, yeah, some stories or things might say that dragons are bad monsters or things like that but um uh, well a lot of stories that we hear about Lizalfos say that they're not the best people either and then you have sebastian and i think that if there's one sebastian there's got to be lots of sebastians you know <laughs> maybe not a majority but a lot of them and, you know, when I was at the monastery, um, I was there for a little bit, and this guy came in, and he was really rude. And he liked to make stories about things that he did, and I didn't believe him, but if your magic comes from dragons is really strong and i think that people would like to hear stories about people like us beating these strong things opposed to you know like hearing about the good things that these strong things do you know some problem with that I can't help what the magic does to me. It... You've seen me after some fights. I'm basically a snarling beast. Hmm. And it keeps getting worse. Well... No matter how much I try and stop it. That I don't know too much about, and <laughs> I'm not the uh, I'm not the best at knowing how to handle or how to have help people figure out how to handle things. But sometimes when mm, Sometimes when things happen, it makes people feel a certain way. And it's about recognizing and taking a step back if you can. And it takes practice. It, it, it takes a lot of practice. Remember yesterday? Was it yesterday? Might have been day before yesterday. When I said I wasn't a good bean. That was... That was because... When... Uh, about... Five or six years ago, details are kind of fuzzy. I would get made fun of. Because... Or I thought I was, because people would make comments or say things about how I think or remember things or how I write or other things. And I'd get mad and I would 
Well, I was small, and I wasn't good at punching then. And so I would let chickens loose in people's crops, or untie a post so the cows would get out, or general little things that I didn't think were a big deal. But I was angry, and I wanted to let that out more than be angry. And I guess the cats aren't afraid of the fog anymore. <laughs> but, I don't know. That's what I had to learn to do. Maybe that'll help. Maybe it won't, but... I'll be here for you if you need to talk, or if you wanna... You know? And then Hikon lightly pats the uh, area where he sticks the uh, bandages and steps away and uh, hands Max his shirt and shawl with a smile. Thanks for the bandages. You're welcome. Is it too tight? I hope it's not too tight. It's just fine. Okay, good. Anybody else have uh, anything they wanted to do before long rests commenced? Uh, I would like to ask uh, Mara, um, or at least mention to Mara that I would like to discuss further actions with her in the morning, and that it's really a good time for well, all of us to get some rest. Yeah, I bet it's a good time for you to get some rest. You guys look awful. Go. Go get, go get some sleep. I resent that remark. It doesn't make it and, any less true. And as I, uh, as I say that, I do like try and press to digitate some grime off of me, as, as I did after leaving the sewers, but like, there's not much energy left. Yeah. Oh dear. I <sighs> know, oh, you run out of cantrips. <laughs> Is not That's how it works. works. You've done, you've done the impossible. <laughs> you've run out <laughs> zero level spell slots. Um. <sighs> well, it's it's not so much that I can't do the magic. It's just that <laughs> it's it's a bit half-assed. Yeah, yeah, my heart's not in it. Oh, man. But yes, um, Zayden, do you have anything you want to do, or are you going to go straight to bed? Um, not bed. Okay. Um, Max seems fine with Hikan. Sidon. Oh, I think one thing we were going to do, which I, at the end of last term, possibly missed, was, was check the the two master ones to see if either of them might have been the guy's sister. Or did we already do that? I think we already did that. I don't think so because that was one of the questions that I've oh, okay. written okay. down for like figuring out Tide's, uh, where Tide's sister was so, or am I missing something I do not believe that we figured out that but it is something that we do need to look into we could do it tomorrow with the guards and the mayor and the stuff and the things hmm. oh, there was that mention of the uh, female bard which might have been her Mm hmm. Oh, okay, no. He will go to bed then. Okay. Um, so you guys go and get some rest. Um, and mercifully, uh, you all wake up at an appropriate time the next day. Um, and, uh, feel fully rested. Um, feel that. Uh, whatever wounds you might have uh, gained the previous day are significantly easier to deal with now to the point where it doesn't really you don't really notice it um, feel energized and ready to go um, and uh, as you um, as you make your way down Mara is once again at, her, at the desk uh, by the front door just kind of uh, sifting through the book and she looks up and smiles at you guys and she says you guys rest well 
Very well. Thank you. Have you had any sleep? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Inside check. Okay, go for it. <laughs> she has the same ring I do that lets her... Have Natural 20! She has the same ring I do that lets her have four hours. She doesn't... I don't believe her. She doesn't appear to be... <laughs> we were with her when she... I know, I know! <laughs> <laughs> she, d she doesn't appear to be, like, tired. She appears to be very fresh-faced and mm. um, in a very pleasant mood, so you assume that she must have gotten some sleep. Good. Um, have you scouted any place where we could get a proper breakfast? Like, around here? Should we just go back to the inn? Well, I haven't really been doing much exploring. Um, That's fair. There's the m mists and all that. I think that has been taken care of. There is a Sarkoza Inn. I'm sure Thicket would be mm. capable of providing you with some good food. Uh, you know who'd know where there's really good breakfast that we need to talk to anyway? The mayor. Mayor knows mm. everything in this town, right? That's what mayors do. They know everything. Not exactly, but close. Okay. Um, I mean, we could go and report to her, but I really prefer to get some food in before we start doing like the heavy lifting and briefings and stuff. The Sarcosa Inn wasn't too far from Mayor Turnia's office, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Laura, you coming? Um, no, I'm just doing the last touching up on the translation of this celestial document. It's, uh, it's a bit odd, I think. Well, we did want to discuss that as well. Should we bring you anything? Uh, no, nah, I'd be fine. I'm sure there's something in the kitchen I can get. Very well. Um, <laughs> we could just stay here, see what's left in the pantry. I don't want to hamper on you guys getting any good food. Max is already going to check the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Um, when I, when I see Max, Max like moving, moving into the kitchen, like, just tell us what you find. Hikon will go help Max because Hikon's already been in this kitchen. Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, roll an investigation check as you enter this kitchen. It's a twelve. Okay. Um. So if 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 Hikon is helping, that's the sixteen. <laughs> Hikan's most definitely helping. Hikan likes to help. Okay. So with a 16, you find essentially the following things left over in the pantry. All of which are good food. Uh, all of which are in good condition. They're not stale or anything. But you find a total of one bread roll, two hunks of cheese, uh, a few strips of preserved meat, and a surprisingly fresh cabbage. That is it. No, it's not enough for everyone. Uh, okay, then. So, we'll go get us food, and I will take the roll, and some of the meat, and some of the cheese, and some of the cabbage, and I'm going to fashion a quick sandwich for Mara, since Mara wants to finish this up. Okay. And... I will hand it to her with a smile, and it's like, yeah. <laughs> she smiles back and says, oh, thank you, that's sweet. Yeah, that's that way you don't gotta get up, and you can keep working. Thank you. <laughs> hey. We're gonna have to meet you elsewhere. Well, that's fair. That was the plan anyway. Uh, Mara... You good here then? Yeah, I'll be fine. Um, you know where to find me, and if I find anything urgent, then just I'll come and find you. If you're heading towards, uh, if you're heading towards the mayor's office. Sarko so in first of all, and um, I think it'd be best for you to, for if if you join us as well with the translation, might be something important there. I'll, I'll put together whatever it is that I can, um, and. Uh, I'll bring it to you guys as soon as possible. Thank you. 
and I think Sarko Satan next. Okay. Um, Sounds good to me. Yeah. Uh, so you head back through uh, Sarkosa. Um, it is quite busy this morning. Um, there are a lot of people out and about, and there is avid talk about the uh, the commotion that happened the previous night. Um, the day the myths were, sh were taken away as, uh, as the port side of Sarkosa had just shuddered as if hit with a colossal earthquake. Um, people are talking plenty about what might have happened. Um, the stories are very different. Um, you know, Every time someone mentions the loud booming noises, Max just sort of sinks into his clothes a bit more. <laughs> um, Renji just grins. <laughs> but yeah, uh, news is abound with um, with the possibility that Sarkosa may actually be safe at night again. Um, and uh, as you turn the corner and head into the Sarkosa Inn, uh, you see that there is a fair amount of people inside now, and they're all still chatting up a storm. Uh, they're enjoying a dr good drink, and you see Thicket, who's kind of standing on the bar, um, and he looks so sees you and says, "Oh hey, hello, good morning. How are you guys? Uh, good, tired, but uh, had a good night's rest." Uh... Could we get some food? Oh, of course, of course. Sorry, I'm just excited. I haven't been this busy forever. Uh, let's see. Uh, what would you like to eat? Um, I could go for some bacon and eggs. A uh, bit of toast if you have it. Okay. Eggs, toast, uh... That will be uh, that'll be one silver piece, if possible. I grab uh, a coin pouch. Uh, would that be one silver per person? It depends on what you order. Right, I'll let everyone order first, and then we'll settle the bill. Okay. Um, he turns to Zayden and says, uh, "Where can I get you, sir?" I'll have the same. Okay. Goes up and down. Uh, turns to Hikan. And you? Uh, could I get some eggs and sausage and bacon and potatoes and toast and, and like, con <laughs> eggs? Like, two or three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, I think it seems unfazed by this. Um, and uh, just write everything down. Um and says, uh, then turns to Max and says, and, uh, you? Max just shrugs and says, fish. Fish? Okay. Um, any particular kind of fish or just fish? Surprise me. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Um, and he kind of, like, pauses a moment as he thinks about the mechanics of how he's going to make that random choice. Um, but <laughs> then he says, okay. Uh, well, uh, if that's the case, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that together that'll be, uh, seven silver pieces, please. Um, and did you guys want any drinks to add on to that? Um, just some, uh, uh, some light meat if you have it. Like meat. Or ale. Okay. Thank you. Um, oh, no. also, art, um, Apparently, your volume is low, and my volume is very high. Oh, okay. Give me a sec. I will do some adjustments then. Okay. Uh, so, I'll lower you down. Uh, and I will increase my mic a bit more on that one. Okay. It might just be that I'm not projecting into the microphone anymore, <laughs> as much as I should be. Um, that does happen sometimes. It, it happens, no, no worries. All right. Okay, uh, yeah, so he's marks down a light mead for uh, Renji, a water for Max. Um, what about our, our remaining two individuals? Water, please. Okay. Part of me wants to be that guy and ask for a mimosa, but... 
a mimosa at seven just... in the morning. <laughs> Drunken master. It's true. <laughs> I'll just have some water, though. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, with the addition of the light meat, that'll put you at uh, an additional five copper. But uh, otherwise, uh, if you guys want to pick a table, I will come and bring that out as soon as I can. So how much in total? Uh, that'll be seven silver and five copper. For all of us? Yeah. Okay. Um, I put down a gold piece and I say uh, we might want to order something in for uh, someone else. Oh, okay. Um, sure. Thank you. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll wait for your order and then provide you with your change when, uh, when we do. Okay. Um, Thanks, Ticket. No worries. Uh, yeah, you guys find a, a place to uh, to set up, and I'll uh, I'll just go ahead and get you your food. Sidon so will find a table. Mm -hmm. And Pre preferably something not too in the center of everything. He finds a nice corner table so that uh, you can brood safely. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure it's the most shadowy one you I can find. I do not find. brood. If anything, I vogue. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. <laughs> oh. Um, but yeah. So not sure, sure what you're doing on the front of a fashion magazine, but oh well. While seated, though. <laughs> uh, so you sit down. Uh, and after about, uh, let's say, half an hour, um... The door to the kitchen opens, and uh, you can see, like, on this tray that's being held above uh, Thicket's head. Um, it, he just kind of wand wanders in uh, over to a table and, s like, heaves the tray and slides it onto the table. And you get everything that you want, uh, everything that you ordered, pretty much very fresh, and it smells great. Max, mm -hmm. your random fish um, is quite sizable. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, is it a full grown Georg? It is not a full. <laughs> if it was a full grown Georg, Thicket wouldn't have been able to move it. Um, no. I no, don't no. know. He could have super strength. It's just an adult bluefin tuna. Okay. It's um actually it is uh it kind of like dominates the tray. Um. <laughs> And uh, as it slides onto the table, you see that it is a marlin. Very okay. small <laughs> for what it is, but it's a marlin. Sweet. <laughs> I was thinking the red swordfish from Phantom Hourglass, but that would be really freaking huge. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> mm. Might need another table. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Thicket, of course. No problem. Uh, let me know if you need anything else. Oh, I gotta get grab that. And just kind of <laughs> wander this off. Um, but yeah. Uh, you are left to your breakfast. Uh, do you discuss anything over or do you just want to sit down and quietly eat? I don't think discussing much here would be beneficial, especially with uh, prying ears. Hmm. Okay, um, so with that, uh, you spend some time enjoying your breakfast. It tastes great. It's not the best you've had, but it's certainly, certainly something, certainly very filling considering the night you just had beforehand. It like, it hits the spot, um, especially the swordfish, which just kind mm. of, it is, it's sweet and, um, surprisingly like, there is the way it's been prepared is that it's kind of been grilled so that the actual meat of the fish is fairly soft but the actual but the outside of it has kind of been grilled to the point where there's a bit of crunch to it um but it is uh it is quite nice um and uh, as you as you finish and uh relax a bit thick it comes back over and says uh, you guys all done yeah yes thank you Awesome. I only have the one piece of bacon left, and it goes down with a crunch. Yeah. <laughs> this was 
Excellent. Figured. Thank you. Have to have half. Um, could we have like um, for the amount of uh, like change? Could we have a couple of um, sandwiches to go? Um, uh, sure. Sandwiches. Uh, any specific filling or? Um, like make a make a nice selection with uh, for the uh, amount of uh, sandwiches that you can make. <laughs> he kind of pauses. Um, <laughs> hmm, sandwiches. Let me just see. Let me see. See now. Uh, yeah, I think I can make a couple of sandwiches. That's fine. Um, and uh, he then he takes a tray away, and then after like fifty minutes, comes back with a couple of uh, with with three sandwiches. Nice. Um, can can we have that bundled up? Sure. Uh, and uh, he leaves them on the table as he goes back. Uh, goes back and gets some like some light brown paper and some twine which he then uh, stacks all the sandwiches together wraps them up in the in the brown paper and ties it up with twine and pushes it towards you and says there you go thank you and i think we should bring these to uh tomorrow and give her at least one uh and keep the others for lunch maybe yeah I just stares at the table for a bit and then says, I think I like fish. Good. There's, like, we don't get a lot of fish at the castle, um, given how, like, at least not swordfish, but there's there's some cod, if, mm. if you're interested. Um, some mackerel. Uh, okay. We can, we can get you some, uh, some fish. And we're back. So don't worry. Thanks. Of course. What are friends for? Um, yeah. Uh, so with, with sandwich in tow, oh, sandwiches in tow, um, I guess you guys are probably going to be heading to uh, Mayor Turnia's place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, so you head out back into the busy streets of Sarkoza. Um, and uh, as you go, in fact, what I'm going to do is actually going to play Sarkoza's music. There we go. Um, I do want to keep an eye out for, like, how, like, the, the hustle and bustle of the city, if it's improved, if it's changed, if those people, like, um, still looking around nervously or anything. Uh, make an insight check. Insight. Yeah. Okay, that's a thirteen. Okay. Um, with a thirteen insight, you have a you have a glance around as you um as you make your way towards Mayor Turney's home. Um, it's uh, like it does seem far more pro and far more active than it is. And you do hear the odd discussion of what to do tonight now that the uh, now that the mist is gone. But some are still kind of skeptical that just because the mist is gone doesn't mean that whatever was in it that kills people isn't gone as well. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's um, it's a there is a bit of tension still, but. Uh, at the very least, the events of last night have gotten people out and together and talking about it um there are there are mentions that the there there is the occasional thing mentioned uh in the guise of say like a a rumor or uh just a, a brief bit of chatter that the um uh that whatever it was uh that was doing it was actually just like four zora in outfits and they've all been captured or something along those lines but some people are like no no surely not it's like did you see what happened to the people who died the first time around and so on and so forth 
Um, so it's a bit mixed. All right. Good to uh, have picked up those rumors at least. Yeah. Um, and those and those kind of thoughts and uh, and this mixed feeling within the town of Sarkoz, it follows you all the way to the quaint little home of Mayor Turnia, who which kind of sits quietly down one of these streets, um, with a with a guard posted outside the front door, um, but otherwise there's hardly anybody around. All right. Um... I will then knock on the door. Okay, knock on the door. After a few moments, the, the door opens and you see Mayor Turnia uh, standing there, resting on her cane, um, uh, standing kind of straight with a pseudo-military uh, uh, poise to her. Uh, and she kind of looks at you and then nods and says, Well... Good to see you again. I have heard many things happened last night. I suppose that you are to be thanked for it. Well, I don't know if we're done yet, uh, but things certainly have progressed, especially last night, indeed. Uh, may we come in? Absolutely. Please, head inside. Find a place to sit. Uh, we shall discuss this matter further. Um, your friend has already arrived to discuss these matters. Our friend? Yes. The blonde woman. With the spectacles and the book. Lara. Ah! Lara. I see. Good, because, uh... Didn't realize she, she has got been... Here. Didn't we didn't realize she got here before us. Hmm. Uh, I only turned up a few moments ago. A lovely girl, to be, truth be told. Very, very inquisitive, but also soft-spoken. Hmm. Qualities... Uh, not all of us possess, indeed. <laughs> of course. Come on in. And, uh, Thank you. She leads you inside um, to the uh, the sitting room, where uh, sitting in one of the chairs is Mara, who kind of looks up and waves a little bit as you enter. Um, and uh, as you each find a place to sit, um, Mayor Turnia kind of closes the door to the room behind her and um, then turns to the rest of you and uh, puts both hands on her cane and says, Now, tell me what it is that you have found. So I think we should just, like, summarize what happened yesterday. Um, explain a little bit uh, about the uh, what we know about the Twilight Cartel. Show her that mess. Mm hmm Okay. Mention the froggy mess that we blew up. Yeah, and that also explains the uh, ruckus of last night. Mention the uh, tablet, everything else with the mask, too. Yeah. Mm hmm um, So as you kind of explain this and you show her the... Uh, the crystalline mask with the roiling clouds within its confines. Uh, she kind of narrows her eyes at it and says, Hmm. Here's my entire... My entire town has been played a fool for the past few weeks. Well, we don't know if uh, we've figured everything out just yet. There are some questions that still refuse to be answered because we know that these uh, these people with with the masks uh, they've been attacking the ships with charmed Georgs but we don't exactly know yet which of them did that if or if there's someone else who charmed them for them um there was an attack uh, by a Goraya a few days ago. Um, we don't know who summoned that creature or why. Um, and we do get the impression that there's something at play with the Twilight Cartel, especially with the Fairwind Trading Company, but we don't know exactly their role. I was hoping that Mara's translation of their ledgers 
which we may have acquired in some way, shape, or form. Um, that that translation could shed some light on that, perhaps. Mm. Interesting. And she turns her attention to Mara, who kind of just sits up properly in a seat, and then just, uh, well, uh, uh, I did manage to translate all of it, but the general gist of it that I have found is that uh, Fairwind was making some illicit deals. Uh, he doesn't mention anything about uh, monsters or uh, Georgs or anything of that kind, but he does mention that a lot of his stuff is kept for a long time in his storage house near the dock. Uh, there is mention that it's mainly the stuff that we found was mentioning about having to go out to uh, uh, Labrina or Holodrum um, to discuss with uh, the trading partners there um, to kind of just keep the the deals that they have. Uh, considering the recent attacks, um, or at least he writes that considering the recent attacks, they're losing faith in his company to trade things. Um, probably not at the same pace that the Zephyr's favor was, but uh, certainly at a at a point where the companies on the other side of the ocean aren't exactly uh, confident that Fairwind can deliver um, at least... Uh, yeah, uh, Fairwind can deliver the goods at a reasonable pace and with relative safety. Um, but that's all I got. Uh, other than the fact that it was written in Celestial, I'm not exactly sure what else I could glean from that. We know he meets with a lot of John Smiths as well. Perhaps even the celestial is written in code. That would be that would be needlessly complex. Maybe there's something in that warehouse. Yeah, that's something we should definitely investigate. Perhaps so. Perhaps so. Well. I would say, for the most part, this is a interesting development. After all, even if he isn't exactly our main culprit and is merely just doing things by coincidence, that doesn't necessarily mean that whatever he's doing with these anonymous people and writing in code in an entirely, completely alien language, it is obvious that he is up to something which warrants investigation. And... If he, even if he isn't responsible for all of this, he still may well have committed some crimes that deem him worthy of being brought to some form of justice. Um, Which may need to happen quickly. Oh? Yeah, he's skipping town. Oh. I believe there's a, a boat ready to ship out uh, today or tomorrow. Today. Today. Right. Well... As it stands, and she kind of like drums her fingers on the back of her hand as she uh, mulls over the situation, um, the lines on her face deepening as she frowns and uh, says, Okay, well, um, how about this? I will send a runner to the port master to demand that there is a uh, full and avid inspection of that ship, which will delay him further allow you to investigate that warehouse of his if there are any clues that would give us some time certainly and I mean you would have the authority to do so um, I'm just wondering if doing something like that will make him wary is uh, un unscheduled inspections are those uh routine well we have enough knowledge to know that uh something is has been using uh these uh, f uh the fog and this natural phenomena to steal things in the dead of night 
it would be irresponsible of us after having captured culprits responsible for performing these raids and perpetuating this myth about monsters in the night that we don't uh, inspect each and every ship in the dock to see if there isn't anyone stowed away on board, so to speak. I think you can uh, definitely spin it in a way that will allay some of the suspicion, at the very least. Indeed. Well, it's before we enact this plan. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you feel the need to share with me in any way, shape, or form? One of the captured uh, persons from the sewer raid may be of interest to someone we have met in Castletown. There was a Zora Bard who was looking for his sister. We have the suspicion that she may have been caught up in this um, well, that is not specifically time sensitive. That is something that we would want to figure out. Hmm. Well, very well. I'm sure by this point that Rundus and um, the rest of his uh, guards have adequately filled out a report of some kind. If they are merely just wearing masks, then finding out the identity of those that lie beneath would not be terribly difficult. Um. This, uh, this Zora, uh, this, uh, this Zora that you know in Castle Town, if it is a sibling, then what type of Zora, what, uh, uh kind of, uh, features should we be looking out for? Okay, honestly, I'm blanking on this one. <laughs> it's some kind of whale. Uh, black and white and, uh, 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 sleek looking. Um, the brother was kind of big, and he kind of like makes portly motion with his hands around his body. Um, kind of Zora, you know? I see. Yeah, some kind of uh, 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 whale, like Max said. Hmm. Okay, very well. I shall, uh, I shall look into this. I'm guessing... Judging by that, probably a Caesar. Uh, very well. Um, if that is the case, um, we shall. Well, after after this is all said and done, if this is where it is all said and done, of course, mm -hmm. we shall see to it that everything is appropriately documented and. Uh, we can perhaps, maybe, even for the briefest of moments, reunite these siblings. At least in some way, shape, or form. Indeed. Right. Well, there is no time to delay. Uh, you best head over to that warehouse of of Mr. Fairwind, and I will send a runner to see if they can stall his departure for a little longer. Thank you. We'd best be off then. Okay. Um, and she nods and uh, guides you back outside, um, leading you to the uh, the bright, sunny mid-morning. Uh, and uh, as she talks to one of the guards who then promptly runs off, uh, one of the other nearby guards will point you in the direction of the various storage houses that are near the docks, which is kind of like on the opposite side of the docks from where the uh, uh, the trading company houses are. Um, <laughs> just kind of sitting in rows, uh, fairly large buildings as well. Um, and by the time you get there, there aren't many, uh, there aren't many people around. Um, but you do see, clear as day, the Fairwind Trading Company, um, the Fairwind Trading Company logo on a sign outside this one warehouse, which is quite large. 
does it look busy? Uh, from uh, from the outside the building. It's yeah, quite, it's quite quiet. There are basically no one here. Hakan would like to uh, stroll casually, looking for a chest, like the one that was in the sewers. Okay. Uh, make an investigation check. Oh boy. Two. Two. <laughs> you, you do a casual stroll around the building, and you find no chest. Okay. And then I meet back up with the party and just Did you have a good walk? No, I didn't find anything. Uh is there any other entrance in the front door? Because um, front doors of a warehouse can be huge. Yeah. Uh it is a large double door at the front. You don't appear to find any other entrance. Okay. No windows? There are windows, but they're smudged. And they lie either side of the door. There are no other windows to the building. And could we spot any, like, living people, creatures, sentries? Make a perception check. I just need to right. check my door. I also I like a look at that. That is a 10. That's a 2. Okay. Alright, so you kind of, you peer through. You don't seem to see any movement. It's surprisingly dark inside. Hmm. Oh. There, 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 is, is there like a big front door or anything like that? Yeah. It's... They already mentioned the big front door. Yeah. Right, just, big just, set just of double some... doors. Big set, okay. Uh, Hikon would like to push his ear next to it to see if he can hear movement on the inside. Make a perception check. 18. Okay. You listen. You don't appear to hear anything on the other side of those doors. Uh, Hikon gives a thumbs up. Yeah, now I will check if doors open. Okay. You press on the door. <laughs> Opens quiet. Well, I say quietly. It opens loudly, but it mm. opens. I'm not going to open it particularly wide, just like wide enough so that it wouldn't be noticed as open from a distance. Mm -hmm. I'm going to peek my head in, take a quick look around. Okay. Uh, you can poke your head in, have a look around. You have dark vision, right? Yes. Okay. 60 feet. Yeah. Uh, so you peer inside, you see boxes and barrels uh, stacked tall in various spots. You see um, shelves, rows and rows of shelves. It's like uh, it's like Flamgo's warehouse, but it's mm. significantly busier and smells a lot less like animal. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. It um, it holds a lot of stuff. Um, None of which appears... To, uh, there's no clear label on any of it from where you're standing for you to be able to note what's in there. Just put my head back in and say, it's a lot of boxes. Well, it is a warehouse. Do you mm. see anyone? No. And then I'm just going to head inside. I will follow. Okay. No, Me I'll too. Okay. So you're Everyone all... jump in the warehouse. You all head inside. For the sake of continuity stuff, I'm going to say Mara had decided to part with you before getting to the warehouse and went back to the trading house to... And I would have given her the sandwiches. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, so, you, uh, uh, you head inside. You close the door behind you. Mm, I'll leave it slightly open. Okay. Just enough to let some light in. Okay. Um, so you head inside the warehouse. That one. Do we hear anything? Um, some soft piano. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> As you that are... must mean that it's a very busy warehouse. <laughs> For someone to play the piano. Uh, 
as you head inside, uh, hmm, that's a good question. Um, if you're actively looking out for something, roll me a perception check. Well, I'm always actively looking out for something. Yeah, yeah. It's another eight. Mm. That's a 21. 21 that's 22. a 22. You think you hear the scurrying of something. Might, might be a rat. That's mm. just kind of wandered in. And make my way towards the nearest boxes and see if, see what they are. Okay. Um, you head over to the nearest boxes are a series like a couple of boxes next to a few barrels which are kind of stacked tall. Um, you kind of look over and wiping away some of the dust, you see that uh, printed on the top of one of the boxes is just written the word black powder. Ah, oh, no, that is something to leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, do... And also, would you... Did you tell us that it's black powder, or do we go also see? Well, I would come up to you guys and say, what's black powder? An explosive powder. Yeah. Does it, like, do we know what black powder is? Uh, feel free to make a... I'm going to use uh, either if you have al uh, alchemist tools as a, as a tool proficiency, otherwise arcana. I'm going to say arcana is tantamount to science at this point. Okay. I'm going to say Max wouldn't know. <laughs> That's a 20 for arcana. 20, 13 for Zyden. Um, yeah. Black powder is a volatile sulfurous material that is often found in... Um, uh, it's well. It's not found. It's typically made uh, in the Death Mountain range by Gorons. Um, while Gorons themselves are more than likely to use things like bomb plants as opposed to anything, because they can naturally grow their explosives on the mountain. Um, they uh, uh, there are occasions where uh, they will trade with the rest of Hyrule uh, with barrels of this black powder, which ultimately would. Um, would allow you know others to utilize it for whatever means that they have typically mining stuff or mm -hmm. anything like that it is very expensive though like there's a reason why the majority of miners will put more faith into a pickaxe than a series of explosives is because it would take like several months worth of paycheck to afford even a small box of black powder um but uh yeah how many of these boxes are well let's... labeled as such. I just I just point at the pile. Yeah, the pile itself <laughs> is roughly six feet uh, on one side, uh, like uh, lengthways, six feet widthways, and about twice as tall as you. Renji just goes pale. Um. Okay. No offense, but avoid any sort of sparks or flame when dealing with this. This is highly explosive. Right, a, okay. A spark could set off this entire place. Oh. And perhaps, given the amount of it, this entire neighborhood. Right. Well... This will go to the stuff, I guess. Hikon puts the flint that he was playing with away. No, I'm kidding. He didn't pull it out. Um, Hikon, <laughs> you! Um, given that Hikon spent the last five years over in the west end of Hyrule, closer to where the war was still active, mm. were there people that had injuries related to black powder that might have visited the monastery for healing? Uh, yes, actually. You remember a series of events where uh, people, either individually or in groups, would turn up. Uh, some of them would have burns, uh, like severe burns. Others would uh, be missing fingers. Uh, and that's the, that's the best outcome for individuals of that sort of injury. Um, 
Uh, you also noted, perchance, that uh, some of this black powder stuff uh, was still kind of active on um, one or two people that you know in particular who had uh, very tiny little iron balls that have kind of just been lodged into their skin. Um, it was weird. It's as if someone had kind of like really cranked back uh, the tension on a slingshot. Hakon just stares at the black powder as they walk through the things, checking on it, because, yeah, it's dangerous, and he's seen what it can do. Okay. Um, so as you continue to explore the warehouse, uh, everyone feel free to make investigation checks. I, what are people looking for specifically? I would be trying, like, keeping an eye out at least for people, and I would be looking for any sort of shipping manifest or ledger for the current warehouse. Okay. I would also like to look for those things. Okay. Sidon would um, be more specifically looking for documents. In this case, I might want to help Max out with his investigation. Do you have more than a plus zero? I have more. Th I have more than a plus zero. Then I will plus help two. you. Okay. <laughs> nice. Hikon is looking well, more for natural twenty for Zaiden. What's the uh, what's the term? Things that are kind of put off to the side. That would be like, oh yeah, if you're gonna sneak into the warehouse, this is where you go, kind of thing. Yeah. Um. Uh, well, like, uh, if, if you're going to smuggle things from the warehouse, this is where you go. Some and that'd be goes, a 10. So, some worker goes, ooh, this is particularly shiny, I'll save it for later and sneak it out of here at some point. Okay. Uh, let's see now. Uh, you all begin to hunt through the building. Um... Uh, Renji, I would say, with your 12, uh, you find... Uh, a shelf of things where there is a pile of documents next to all these little bits and baubles and stuff. Um, it's uh, It looks like it's attached to some kind of clipboard. Um, but uh, the weird thing is that um, the... Uh, uh, the weird thing is, as you kind of look over these bits and baubles, they don't seem to match any kind of category system that you would think they do. You see, like, oh, at one end, you see this big, what appears to be a liar. Um, uh, next to it is, like, a box. And then you see several vials of things followed by a pile of metal bars from the looks of it. Um, and uh, Do I recognize any, like, significance to these? Um... I'd say with the with the liar, you know it to be a liar. Um, yeah, that much you is obvious. Liar. Uh, the uh, with the box, you kind of look at it and you see that there's a little emboldened sort of like sailing thing on it. Um, you believe this to be a small box of navigators' tools, um, and uh, uh, then you have the vials, four of which are filled with water, and two of which are filled with. Um, this kind of powdery substance and then of course there's the there's the uh metal bars like ingots almost um although not necessarily ingots they seem to be a little slimmer pick one up yeah is it particularly heavy it's about a pound and there's seven mm -hmm. of them throw it back for a sec mm. I don't Is know. Is it a, of a, a particular metal that's like identifiable? Uh, well, with your dark vision, you only see things in black and white, so the color's going to be out of the question. But the fair enough. Um, as for like the markings on it, I'd say, uh, give me a general intelligence check because general intelligence. Yeah. Eight. Um, eight. The markings escape you for the moment. 
Okay. Um, I will just like uh, without making a sound, but I'm not hiding it from the people around. Just take one of the bars and slip it in the bag of holding. Okay. Okay, you half inch of bar. <laughs> put it into your, put it into the bag. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, sweet. Um, all right. Uh, he can't. Um, as you're kind of wandering around, uh, you don't seem to find anything that states like, uh, or that you would think is like a little hidey hole for little smuggled goods. Uh, you don't seem to uncover any kind of traps or latches or anything of that variety. And the rest of the warehouse seems to be fairly orderly. Um, the one thing you do find that kind of sparks your interest is that there are a trio of cages about the size of, like, they're fairly small. It look like they'd hold, like, a small dog or a cat or something. And they're all open and empty. Are there... Is, is it kind of dusty in here or anything like that? Because uh, I'd be looking for tracks if they're open. There's a light bit of dust. Um, but there's... it's Otherwise, it seems fairly clean. People do come and go fairly often. Uh, from the looks of it, it seems to actually have some activity to it. You just must, must uh, you just might have caught it off on a day that it was closed, which probably wouldn't be out of the question considering Fairwind is meant to be leaving today. Okay, um, but yeah, so I'd be looking to see if I could see like tracks or any evidence of an animal that was or at one point in these cages. Okay, uh, make a survival check. Fourteen. Uh, you think you see some tracks? Um, all of them kind of like move around in a rather sporadic fashion, but all of them only get about six feet away from the cages before they clamber on, or they seem to disappear under the um, under the shelves. You see some markings in the dust on those shelves that indicate they may have clambered up into the rafters of the warehouse. Are there boxes that are stacked high? Uh, yes. Okay. Hikon will start clambering up the boxes to get closer to the rafters. Okay. And you do so. Um, in the meantime, um, Zayden, with your 23, natural 20. Uh, I exist. Yes. <laughs> uh, you head, um... You kind of think to yourself, okay, so if this is anything like Flamgo's Warehouse, chances are there is a back office somewhere, and you make a beeline for it. Um, as you kind of maneuver through these places, you do catch a glimpse on the side of uh, side of you. You see boxes that are marked as... Uh, what's the word? You see boxes that are marked as trinkets, val uh, valuables, uh, magic items, which the magic items boxes in this case seem to actually be fairly small. Um and uh so on and so forth uh but as you head out uh towards the the back the back of the warehouse you do find a single wooden door which uh leads into what appears to be a room of some kind there is a window um to this room in any case it's small with a desk uh, and you can clearly see that through the window itself all right, uh, Zaiden will call out to the others to say he's found the back office. It's just past the trinkets and magical items over this way. Okay. Yeah, I, don't I glance around to see if I note any like movement after Zaiden's called out. Uh, perception check. Perception check. Could I also make one since I have a higher vantage Ten. now? Sure. Or I'm working on getting a higher vantage. Yeah. Perception 20. Hmm. Um, Renji, with your 10, uh, you don't seem to notice anything. The only movement that you notice is that you catch a, glim catch a glimpse of Hikan as he clambers up a pile of boxes. Not a gunpowder pile of boxes, thankfully. Um, Thank Hylia. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Hikan, 
as you glance around, uh, you do see, like, just off over to one opposite corner of the warehouse, there is appears to be something that scurries behind something and disappears around a corner. Um, and as you look into the rafters, you think you see something do the same, just disappears into a hole in the wall, and then... gone. Hmm. Okay. Since they're a bit further away from each other than Hikon feels safe at the moment, he will turn around, uh, jump off the boxes, and regain, uh, rejoin the party, and let, let Max and Renji know um, as we're heading towards Zaiden that there's, there were cages, and they're open, and I think I found some stuff that headed towards the rafters. And I think I saw some movement of the animals that might have been in there. So I don't know if they're animals or other things, since Flamingo did have a Lionel. He did. But they're not a Lionel. They're not. They're they're they're, they're not that big. Like okay. Cat and dog. Yeah, we'd know if one of those was here. Fair enough. Yeah, they don't deal with stealth very well. As we walk over to where um, Zayden is, I want to look at that trinkets and magic items thing. Okay. Go, oh, me too. I, I would join you. Uh, you have a look at this, these trinkets and magic items. Um, in the... Um, uh, as you kind of glance over it, uh, you find that most of the boxes are nailed shut with the exception of one, which is not terribly big. Um, or at least when you open it, it's not terribly full either. Uh Within it, you find what appears to be eight small spheres around about, like, say, the size of a golf ball. Um, and they're kind of piled at the bottom. Next to it is what appears to be a vial of something, uh, of a liquid that seems to sparkle a little bit. But with your, with your dark vision, you can't tell any more details about it. Um, you also find what appears to be a... Uh, a rod about one foot in length at either end appears to be sculpted images of horses um and then propped up against the back of this box roughly about four foot in length appears to be a longer stick uh, at either end being these kind of jagged bladed ends um Ooh. look a bit Ooh. like lightning bolts i think we should Ooh. all attempt to identify these items yeah. Who wants to help me with my plus five arcana? I will help you. I, will I just don't think I can help you, to be you fair. Can, you can give us moral support. I will use yeah. my plus three with guidance. Ooh, good. For a total of 23. 23. And a 17. Okay. Uh, which item are you identifying? Each? I am identifying uh, the... Uh, Golf ball sized beads. Mm -hmm. Horse stick. Horse stick. Okay. Um, Renji, you kind of have a glance at them. You're not mm -hmm. exactly sure what they are. You at first you think, oh, they might be like, you know, like you you tentatively think that they might be a pearl of power. Like mm -hmm. and eight pearls of power. That's phenomenal. But you kind of excellent. You kind of flick it and realize this doesn't feel like actual pearl. Pearl. Hmm. Feels like a different material. Feels a bit heavier, soft. No, almost softer. You think it's made of gold, um, oh. but you can't think of any item that is a gold pearl or a gold sphere. Um, so there might just be golden pearls. Uh, you're not sure. Um, Zayden, with your twenty-three, um, you kind of examine it and you look at it and you find that it has a button on the side of it. And you kind of think, uh, what does that do? Click it. And then as you kind of try and move it to examine it further, it stays where it is. It just Yay. freezes in air. Hmm. And no matter how much you try and move it, no matter how much you try and heft it, it does not move. I will try clicking the button again. You click the button again, it just falls into your grip. Uh, from the place where it was literally just stuck in reality. Hmm. Interesting. You have obtained an immovable rod. 
with horses on its motif. Yeah. Because uh, so... even wild horses couldn't drive me away. <laughs> so we also had the sparky stick, and was there another one? Uh, there was a potion of some kind with sparkle liquid. Mm -hmm. um, let's examine the fuck out of that stick. Okay. Um, I will give Renji guidance. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, a twenty-two if someone wants to help, and I was. That is, I am helping. So that's a twenty-six um, for the uh, for the sparkly stick. For the sparkly stick. Um, so with the sparkly stick, you examine it, and immediately it clicks. This is quite clearly a javelin of lightning. Interesting. Who will use this? Any of us could use this. Mm -hmm. Javelins are simple weapons. Hmm. In fact, I think I'm the only one who can't, because I have specific <laughs> weapons. I mean... The question then lightning. becomes... What are people's strength scores? Because I believe javelins proc on strength. Do they? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, it's throwing, so it's dexterity, isn't it? Um, javelin is a melee weapon, but you can throw it. Right. Um, uh, so it's, and I then it is a ranged weapon decks. attack. And then it, it does... Simple... But also it does javelin of lightning stuff. Yes. So you make a ranged weapon attack to do the throw... Name ability modifier for that attack roll and damage roll that you would use for a melee attack with that weapon. For example, if you throw a hand axe, you use your strength, but if you throw a dagger, you use either your strength or de your dexterity since the dagger has the finesse property. I mean, I haven't decided other than a quarterstaff what my monk weapons are. Javelins lack the finesse property, so that means they are <laughs> strength based but weapons. Monks can turn anything they're proficient with into finesse weapons. They can. Yes. And most so, are proficient to javelins. So given my strength is plus zero, I think this is probably good for the card. I, I look over at the, the the this like throwing spear. Plus I look it, over at Hakan. It supports the growing relationship <clears throat> between the boys as they now both have their own sources of lightning. Yeah. I take give it to uh Hakan and I say Um We'll have to figure out how this works exactly, but this could be a good addition to your um, repertoire of skills. All right, then. Um, and I will be looking up Javelin and thinking things. <laughs> Don't worry. I will add it to your treasury. Yeah. So um, how many of these golden balls? Eight. Eight. Golden ball. And we will attempt to identify the potion. Okay. Yes. More guidance upon Renji. I and do feel guided. And more assistance. Uh, that is a 22. Then. Okay. With a 22, you can you kind of swirl it around. You see it. You've seen a couple of these before. It's definitely a potion of healing. Good. Healing. And uh, the amount-wise, would we know if it's a no, standard greater. one, a greater one? Judging by the size, you believe it's probably just a standard healing potion. Mm. Does anyone else not have any healing potions? I still have two. I mean... I have four yeah. regular oh. healing potions. I could do with one. Then, when we discuss this, I look over at Sidon and uh, Max. Sidon will point at Max. Okay, I hand it to Max. You do get a bunch of free HP by being an animal. <laughs> well, I get free HP from being an animal. By being a moon druid, I can use spell slots to heal. What's and that? I have always have healing word and cure wounds as my level one spells. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Just a font of hit points. Yeah. Just why would I ever need a health potion? Hmm. Okay. Um, so. And now we will go and first get the other. Yeah. There you go. Uh, uh, Zaiden will put the golden balls in his bag of holding for now. Alright. And try identifying them again later. Okay. 
Uh, so you put away the golden balls. Um, you, uh, um, yeah, you put away the golden balls, you head into the office. Um, and on the table is what appears to be another ledger, though it seems like it's only open at the first page. And, um, the page itself, hold on a sec, let me find my notes, specific notes for this. That one, that one. Uh, you find a ledger with one written page in it. The pages preceding them seemingly have been torn out. Uh, the entry was dated a day ago. It has a black hard leather cover, which is uh, which itself is otherwise featureless. Is it written in a language that we know? Does any of you speak Gerudo? <laughs> Tyrina! <laughs> oh, oh, does any of us speak Gerudo? It'll take me a while, but I can read it. <laughs> All right. I will, uh, I will put it in your journal then. All right. Boink. All right, it's in documents, right? Uh, give me a sec. I will move over to documents because I just realized I haven't put it into your document. Uh, notes and clues, that one. That one. Uh, uh, this is where we put uh, our there. sponsor. If <laughs> we had one. All right. Just me, man. <laughs> so, hey, 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 do you guys like doing things on the internet? Then you should try out the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so, given that Gerudo is technically Hikan's third language, um you do like it takes him a little bit and he's like moving his mouth to the words and you can tell that he's reading exceptionally slowly and then after he finishes reading it he has to think about it for a minute and then he translates <clears throat> this appears to be a turbulent time in our kingdom the king's death via magical assassination seems to have stirred everyone up again. I keep being told of conflicts among the independent villages with marks around it in the west of Hyrule, moving from cold wars and skirmishes to open conflict. This is good. It will breed a new market that we can bankroll with our only competition being those damnable Gerudo and their child king. Hey, that's not nice! Sorry. No matter. <laughs> this is but another asset the cartel could add to its ranks. I do, however, grow concerned over these beasts I have in my control, or lack thereof. The control I have is only lasting for a day now. This takes up much of my time with needed upkeep, for if my plot to keep the people of this town out of my business is to succeed, I will need to maintain the mists and keep the hired help under control, much less the actual monsters. Luckily, the progress with the young Zora girl has been fortuitous. Her gift as a singer is very close to full weaponization, and soon I might not need the monsters anymore. I can simply plug my ears and let her song ward off any curious individuals. My supplier is hard to contact, as is the nature of our business. They seem aloof when talking over the sending charm, and the only thing I know about their location from my own spies is they come from the east. My guess is that they're hiding somewhere in Zora's domain or even on Snowhead. Perish the thought. And then he remembers that Snowhead had a mention in another letter. And but keeps going on. Perhaps they're in the lands to the north. I sent a team there a month ago in the hopes of finding more customers or new resources, but they haven't returned as of yet. I'm skeptical of sending another group north. If something more insidious had kept them from coming back, I will keep assessing the situation as it develops. Next entry will be in language number five. Remember to make the, destroy this entry when you make the new one. Fairwind Dawn. 
And that's all of it. That is a lot. John. Well, with this, uh, we could go to Mayotania and truly uh, put him behind bars. Hmm. I feel like we should probably do something about the massive amounts of gunpowder before we leave. Uh, yes. Uh... Can anybody generate enough water to soak it, or are we going to have to bring some over? Can make fog. <laughs> I got a new stick to poke it with. Don't. <laughs> I can't make anything that would uh, ruin the effic efficacy of uh, the black powder. It's water, water, water. I think it'll be uh, water, or just making sure it bel uh, it blows out into the into the harbor itself. Um, hmm. A suggestion I could go with. I could potentially get a, a large empty box, fill it with water. I could reduce its size so we could bring it back in. Uh, let it grow back to size as we dump it on top of everything. Possible. Uh, Hikon will spend um, the time while they're doing this on some of his parchment writing in his very sloppy handwriting the uh, record of affairs. Hmm. And he takes his time with it to make sure that he's spelling things correctly. Okay. Alternatively, I think we all have bags of holding if we just um, empty out one for a moment to fill it with enough water to dump on this. I don't have a bag of holding. You all have bags of holding. That's possible. Um, well, I'll just transfer all our stuff into someone else's bag of holding, hand the empty bag to... Uh, well, I mean, we, we have a warehouse here. Wait five seconds for him to get to the water. <laughs> um, I start having this taking conversation out... in the office, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Who's closest to the door? Um, I would be at the desk since I'm writing. Probably me. Okay. Because I've sort of vaguely wandered away from the conversation. Right, and your passive perception is 15, which is good enough. Um, mm. As you're kind of standing near the door, you glance to your side and you see in between the rows of shelves, you see a small form, roughly the size of a house cat, though a bit lumpier. Um, as you peer at it, you see that it looks kind of like a mouse, but it's bigger and fatter and the ears are stubbier. And the thing that stands out most to you is as this big rictus grin on its face. Like it's baring its teeth in a kind of hee sort of smile. Um, and it just kind of stares at you. Guys, mouse is looking at me funny. I poke my head out. Oh dear. That is ugly. Is it an actual animal? It is an actual animal. Oh. Hmm. I'm not sure if I have the ten minutes necessary to cast Sleep of Animals. You could try feeding it. All right. What, uh, what do weird smiley mouse like to eat? What do weird smiley mouse like this like to eat? What is it? Uh, make a nature check. Ten. Um, it doesn't occur to you immediately what it is. You think it might just be some unfortunate cat-mouse thing. Um, <laughs> it doesn't suddenly... It suddenly strikes you, however, exactly what this thing is. Um, because you've made note of these bumming around, uh, in, like, close to more developed areas or sometimes in quarries, actually, as you kind of look at it, it m takes a couple steps forward, and behind it, its tail moves from behind a box, and you see at the very end is this big sphere, almost as big as it. You realize that this is, a, that, th that this is what is called a bomb chew, 
or a real bomb chew, since bomb chews nowadays seem to be developed as actual mechanical devices. Oh no. Ooh, real bomb chew. You know that they... It's odd how they are capable of reproducing, considering that their entire existence ends abruptly and uh, certainly contributes to its namesake. They go boom. <laughs> okay. Does it look hostile? It's smiling at me. I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, it doesn't look immediately hostile, but then it doesn't. Uh, you you believe it doesn't need to be hostile for it to explode. Uh, they just tend to go off either through overexcitement or defensively or offensively. Um, as you kind of peer at it, you see that like its little breaths are getting faster and faster and faster and faster. Um, do you share with us that these things explode? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna go grab the ledger, tell Hakan, we don't have time right now. Book it. <laughs> yep. Leaving is a good option. Um, okay. Yeah, you, uh, you... And then we'll run, run. Run. You book I... it. Um, who, who's going to be, like, in the back... Because I Pro probably me. Okay, so I will be running with you. Um, and if we get in trouble, there's always Misty Step. Okay. Um, I will run alongside Hikan if he doesn't run off too far. Uh, so all... I'll keep pace with the party. <laughs> all of you make acrobatics or athletic checks, whichever are preferable. Okay. Sixteen. Fourteen. Fourteen. Ten. Okay. Oh, he can. Um, I rolled a two. <laughs> uh, so as you go out, uh, as you make your way out, trying to run away, the moment you begin to move, you hear the coming from this bomb chew creature. Um, and uh, as you go, you weave in and out between these haphazardly organized pieces of crap um, that fill this uh, that fill this warehouse. Um, as you go, Hikan, you take a misstep on something that's just lying on the floor and you stumble a bit and have to stop to catch yourself. You're not prone, but you did have to pause for a moment as everybody kind of just barrels past you. Um, give me, everyone give me another one. Natural 20. 21, 24, 20. 14, 14 again. Um, so you needed two successes before you got three failures in order to get out of this warehouse. Um, but as you kind of do, 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 you kind of like the person in front just crosses their arms over their face and bursts through the door. Um, all of you just tumble outside as the doors kind of swing shut once again. There's a pause. Can can I um, uh, since I did take that stumble and everyone did move past and I am pretty speedy. Mm -hmm. I want to go stand on Hikon's not like 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 Hikon's like okay well we can't stop them no 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 hold on hold on this is what I'm supposed to do with these <laughs> Hikon goes and stands on one of the black powder boxes uh -huh. waiting for the last possible moment uh -huh. <laughs> as the bomb shoes approach to Book it out the door. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Give me a dexterity saving throw. That's good. 17. That's good. Uh, you you <sighs> kind of wait, and you see as you kind of you stare back at the one that's following you, and it is to kind of just scrambling after you down the down one of these shelves and you then begin to hear the hiss from other sides as more as two more of these things just emerge from little hidey holes that they've been st sitting in and just kind of uh, approach you as well and at the last possible moment you push forward you 
dive out the open door, tumble out into the street, and kind of just do another small kind of Mario-style long jump tumble um, and uh, get a little bit further away just as a colossal explosion rocks the warehouse. It goes utterly up in flames. There is a huge, huge noise to the point where you're kind of like your ears are all ringing. Um, I want people to make uh, constitution saving throws um, to see how well you deal with the noise. 18, 16, 17, and... 11. 11. Okay. Well, uh, I also haven't properly uh, changed the macro yet. Those were 18s, not 17s. Okay. Because right. of my cloak. Yeah. Um, oh. So, uh, Zaiden, uh, sadly, for the next minute, you are deafened. Um, as this, as you get the worst case. No. Of... Okay. <laughs> 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 Guys, the. Oh, oh, much better. Um, Zaiden doesn't deal with pain. He just says no. <laughs> <laughs> what if he needs to hear things? Yeah. Um, as you do. Uh, I'd also like all of you to make another dexterity saving throw. This time, if you have evasion possible, then it works for you in this instance. Um, but this do is... I get That's any 19. advantage for my previous natural play? Uh... 26. Yes. Um, I'd say yes, you get advantage for your previous natural 20, because you got out in just, a, like, in enough time to just kind of move. Um, all right. Uh, so, with your high rolls... Uh, there we go. You take six points of fire damage, um, each of you. Uh, as the backwash, uh, as the, the backblast from the uh, from the explosion rolls over you, um, and I also would like each and every one of you, if you'd be so kind, as to roll me a natural twenty. Oh, roll a me natural a natural twenty. Roll, yeah, roll me a, a d twenty by itself. Oh, okay. Twenty. <laughs> as you know, hold on, I've got it wrong. Roll me a d hundred. Sorry. Okay. Oh no. Yeah. That's the 54. 54. 81. 2, an 81, two, and a 53. 53. Okay. Oof. All right, so. I'm stop the music stack as it kind of winds down a bit. Um, you, uh, as you kind of reel from this explosion, which kind of rocked you in different directions, you notice certain things are a bit weird. Um... Zaiden, I'd like you to roll again for me, please. Oh, no. Okay. 61. All right. Okay. So, the first thing that anyone notices um, is uh, Ikan and Renji. Yes. You feel exceptionally sober. <laughs> like you feel so alert. It's like you've both downed a tremendous amount of coffee. Um, and you will feel like that for the next 16 days. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, no. Welcome and... to the wild magic table, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Max, I'd like you to roll again for me, please. Okay. 75. Right. Um, alright. Uh, so, Renji and Hikan, you're both hyper alert, and you're kind of like, oh, whoa, this is weird. What? As you both look at Max, who is glowing like a sun lamp. Um, <laughs> he is super bright. He glows with and a bright... And freaking out! <laughs> he glows with a bright light in a 30-foot radius for the next minute. <laughs> Eddie, I put my Eddie. cloak over Max. <laughs> As as you do, you clear your cloak over Max. As you do so, I want you to make a Constitution saving throw for me, please. Okay. That is a 15, sixteen. Uh, it's a sixteen. Okay, that's fine. 
uh, you avoid being blinded by being in immediate proximity to Max. Um, as for Zaiden, uh, you see all this going on, and as you open your mouth to speak, you realize that you can't do anything but shout for the next minute. Zaiden will use his circlet of telepathy. <laughs> <laughs> And say, are you guys okay? Using telepathy. I'm glowing! <laughs> I just I, uh, I just imagine because you have to say something, it's are you guys Are you guys okay? <laughs> In our heads. I mean to begin with that probably is a reasonable thing to shout. Yeah. <laughs> I feel remarkably clear headed. I'm not Why sure. Am I I'm glowing? Uh, I don't no, I feel but great. I Does anyone else want to go for a run? Let's go for a run. Come on, no. let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <sighs> she kind of oh, stands next to this towering oh, no. inferno that was once the Fairwind Trading Company warehouse. I was <laughs> actually so on second thought. We need to go. <laughs> let's go. Kikon jumps in the water. <laughs> Just dives off the top. <laughs> Max, Max is just growling as he walks towards the top. I need a drink. <laughs> oh I dear. See why, I see why uh, two would not be good for using the spell table. Because then I'd have to do this another nine times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I can do nine more dice if you want. No, it's like I, I went with like just do a reroll on certain ones because it's like it. I like I I wanted to go for effects that were immediately obvious. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I yeah. like the ones that just summon a thing. So, yeah, I was hoping for a unicorn. It would just like I was hoping for forty-two. <laughs> I wanted to be a potted plant for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. Besides the. Obvious glowing. Mm -hmm. Max, are you. Like, are you okay? I can't really see if you're injured because of the brightness. I'm fine. Good. Okay. Please calm down. <laughs> There's going to be some shit to figure out now we um like is there any like damage to the buildings besides uh the now blown up warehouse they are starting to catch fire oh shit um is there like a, a bell close by um, there isn't a bell close by, but a small platoon of guards rushes around the corner, <laughs> as one would expect, considering the size and magnitude of such an explosion. Um, um I, I try and press to digitate as much, like, soot off of my face, um, and immediately shout to the guards, Come quickly, bring buckets! Pecan takes a deep breath and hides underwater. <laughs> Max fumes some more under the cloak as he glows <laughs> continuously. Zaiden will use his druid craft to put out as much fire as he can. Okay. Um, so as you as you come about this, like uh, Zaiden, you're using keeping your druid... in mind druid craft has a vocal component. Oh god. <laughs> oh dear. What are you shouting? Go out! Go out! Go out! <laughs> Stop being on fire! Stop it! No! No! <laughs> Stop no. burning yourself! Stop burning yourself! <laughs> As you do this, and then it's like, like Max is just kind of standing in one spot, covered in a cloak, and visibly shaking from rage. And you, yeah. <laughs> um, you got. Uh, you've got Hikan, who who the fuck knows where he's gone at this point, and now he's just like Randy is like bring buckets, and like this platoon of guards just stops as I, I just, uh, go, <laughs> <laughs> just turn around like the rest of this platoon. We have to go out and find more buckets because shit has literally quite like gone fucking crazy at this oh. point. 
if even better with the description of Druidcraft. Whispering the spirits of nature. Not anymore. Stage whisper time. <laughs> Yo, fairy, get a bucket. <laughs> Let it go. <laughs> Pick up the fucking bucket. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, I would say it continues like that for quite some time. Um, as you uh, as as you begin, like the guards return with buckets and whatever water they have. Some one of them comes along with like a um a long hose, which he which uh, a couple of them just throw one end into the water and then uh they Quick, hook it I can't up. dodge. <laughs> <laughs> they hook it up to like this pipe thing and start pumping stuff from the actual water. So it's like they've they ha like they seem on top of it to a degree, but it's definitely something that they're never gonna have enough water to put this out this like immediately. Um but uh yeah, as this as this column of black smoke rises into the air, um, and you kind of spend the rest of your, as two of you who only have minute long effects, spend the rest of mm. your time doing whatever it is you do, um, and they kind of wear off after a while. Uh, yeah, uh, we will um, we will end the session there for the evening, uh, for it is going on for a bit, and the next bit will probably take a very long time. So, uh, yeah. Y'all yeah, uh, are going to get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, I stopped glowing now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, thank you all very much for listening and stuff. My name is Articulate T, I am the GM, and with me today, as always, I have had Renji Vox being played by the Netherlad. Sleep well, my friends. He can see our being played by Avarance. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Zaiden Shari being played by Robo Pirate. Good night! <laughs> and Max being played by Keystrip. Landed by the light. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye bye now. <laughs>